two of my favorite acting experiences in my life and in my career have happened uh, with you there on set as well. Uh, I think we first met in person, Reese, on uh, on set of We Came to Wreck Everything, which was an indie feature film still in post-production because uh, I think they're just tweaking it, making it better and better and better. Uh, but we shot it in 2017, so this is uh, it's coming on five years, so it's, yeah. it's been a while. Um, but that was one of my favorite all-time experiences. The cast and crew there was amazing. The script was amazing. Every shot, if you were watching the dailies or watching the monitor, um, shout out to Alex Cashew, the uh, the director, and um, um, Space on the cinema. Uh, Dimitri, the cinematographer, was great. He was just like a mad scientist with just how perfect he was. Um, yeah, that was super fun. Remember the murder quarry? Oh, not man. to give not, not to give anything away, but there was a there's a scene in a in a quarry, and we nicknamed it the murder quarry because it was that kind of vibe. We I thought those were nice. You coming out in like you came out, you were dressed in like a suit, I believe, and you had this massive gun. And uh, I was like, man, that is a formidable guy. <laughs> that yeah. was like, the time we met each other was in the murder quarry. Yeah, I was like, met each other. I was a henchman. I was one of the the big boss man's henchmen. Um, again, you'll have to watch it. We came to wreck everything. It's going to be great. The script was amazing. The shoot was amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, big giant like assault rifle style, which I would never want to have. <laughs> like I'm so anti gun, but the second <laughs> the second you're an actor, you're like fucking cool. <laughs> I got gun fever. Like we're all we all have gun <laughs> fever on set. They were all just like told none of them were firing. They were just all dummies um, for camera, but um, still felt cool. I'm like, hey, look at me. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And um, the other one was Fire Girls with Think Feel Productions, uh, who was written and directed by Chell Steven, who oh, yeah. was in a podcast guest uh, very early on. I think she was episode 13, 14, 15, somewhere in there. And fun fact, Reese made a cameo in that because that was an early pandemic when we shot that episode with Chell and Reese popped on to the Zoom call and we had a little convo there. So mm -hmm. uh, he Zoom bombed us and joined our lunch. And <laughs> uh, so technically, this is your second appearance on the podcast. Yeah, uh, it would, would be. It would you've, be. you've joined a, a very small class of uh, repeat visitors and repeat guests. So um, look back. And actually, that that Chell Steven episode is one of our most listened and and most watched episodes. People love Chell, so well, Chell's, so, Chell's unreal, man. At some point, that episode went a little semi-viral, and like, there's if you look at our downloads and listens, there's this big spike on Chell's episode there, and we're like, what happened there? Like that, that must have been when she was in the press very quickly, or like a big a big uh, release. But um, so Fire Girls, you want to tell, let's share that Fire Fire Girls story because one of my favorite all-time stories. It is one of my favorite all-time stories too. So right. I mean, I'll kick it off and then you feel free to. Okay, go ahead. But um, so guys, <laughs> Lars. Lars and I were in Fire Girls together. Lars had the pleasure of working with Chell before, by the way. So just touch base on, on Chell Steven. She's a visionary. She's incredible. Her, her work is like eye-catching, eye-popping. And just, I just... Yeah, I just want to see more of everything. So fun to work with. She's awesome. just like so positive, but also like she's the perfect mix of being so fun and so positive, but also really like we got to get shit done and get to work. Like she's half cheerleader and half general. Um, yeah, she's so her sets are so fun. She's an actor's director. I don't say that about many. Like she knows what we need and she lets us do what we want. Lars and I had a lot of fun. The last night we uh, we had a workshop with a prominent casting director here in Toronto. Am I allowed to say who it is? Are we allowed to say names? I'm sure. Gonna... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Melissa, Melissa A. Smith. Uh, we had a casting workshop with her uh, down in Milestones, but we're filming in Kingston. I guess the other side of Kingston. Right? Yeah, yeah. So about two and a half hours away. Um, you know what? I'm going to let Lars kind of go from that because I actually slept most of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the part where uh, Reese went to sleep. So, yeah. so we, we had signed up for the casting director workshop before i believe before like maybe a month or two before before we got cast in the short or at least before scheduling happened so we had two overnight shoots overnight on a friday night uh, leading into saturday morning and overnight on a saturday night leading into sunday morning and so we shot until like i feel like we got wrapped at 4 30 a.m sunday sunday a.m 
And we had to get back to Toronto to this casting workshop for a 9 a.m. start. Uh, so basically, like in the best of scenarios, we we're going to drive for two hours, maybe get two hours sleep and then go do this casting workshop, which isn't ideal for your body and your energy. But it's just the way it worked out. And both of us were excited and we weren't going to bail from from either things. So um, it's like 530 in the morning. We're on the 401 heading east back to Toronto. Reese is sleeping. Um, I 100 percent like and not, not to. I gave like, you know, as a passenger, you always want to stay awake. you like, you don't want to be the guy that falls asleep. But I'm like, go ahead, just sleep. I'll drive. It's all under control. And then he wakes up. Reese wakes up to me pulling off to the side of the highway going, I think we got a flat tire. And he's thinking like, are you fucking with me? Like, are you pranking me right now? Is this just a ha ha Lars gag? Uh, but we had blown a flat tire 530 in the morning. Literally, the sun is is rising behind us. Um, barely anyone on the highway and I don't have a spare in that car but I have one of those um, like it's like a um, uh, what do you call it like a aerosol bottle of vulcanized rubber that fills up your tire and seals it at the same time so but our tire the tire was like not in good shape so we fill it up but it's all like bulbous and it's not even round anymore like we're dry <laughs> when we're driving it was like click clunk Clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> and so, but we got to, so it's like, now it's like 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. We have a total fucked up tire. And so we figure out a plan. Like there's no Ubers out there. There's no public transit where we were. We're in the middle of nowhere. And so we figure out we got to get to the go station, the train station. So we drive 60 kilometers an hour for an hour uh, on the side of the highway, like on the shoulder, because we couldn't go at max speed with the tire limp into the train station grab go tickets still have like another hour on the go station get to union station and then just get to the casting place like in time for them to open the door and let all the actors in and then tell everyone this harrowing story of how we got it but what i love about that is i don't think anywhere in either one of our minds we were not getting to the casting workshop uh, like none of like we could have easily just been like oh hey we have a flat tire. We're two hours out of town. We haven't slept. It's been an overnight shoot. Let's kibosh this. Can you please give us a refund or hold a credit to the next thing? But that never happened. Neither one of us. We were just like, we're fucking getting there. It became like a movie in our own, like a real life movie where like, am I in a movie right now? And it's me and Arise trying to get to this casting workshop. It was like, we were on a mission, man. And I remember we were running lines too. Uh, on the train, we were running lines because we had been assigned scenes so you don't want to show up and not have your shit together. It was a first first meeting with this casting director. But it was I, I, I was always really proud of that because I felt that that demonstrated for both of us the commitment level and dedication to show up for something. And from a casting director standpoint, you're going to hire a professional. You can't not show up to the shoot or to their rehearsals or to their uh, or like a wardrobe fitting and. I felt the signal that we sent to her was like, oh, shit, if we book these guys for something, they're going to fucking get there no matter what. So kudos, kudos to our uh, sense of adventure. I'm just going to pat myself on the shoulder for that one right there. That was there still way better than I could have explained it. So. <laughs> <laughs> it um, was that was like that was so it was so fun. And first of all, there was like a half an hour where it was like, we're fucked and we don't know what to do. Like I'm looking up, we're trying to, we're getting shitty cell reception, trying to figure out where the train stations are, trying to, to uh, figure out if we can get a tow. Uh, I remember I called, I had a buddy who lived maybe about a half an hour uh, out there. So I'm calling him or texting him and waking him up at like 6.30 a.m. to see if he's available <laughs> to bail us out, uh, which he was not. He was not even, he was in another city, so he couldn't help. So. It was like all of these things. We it was against all odds that we made it, and that's why it felt good. So the lesson is, it's like it's the same thing. Do you ever just miss a streetcar or a bus? And there's that moment where it's like, should I just stop and let it go and get the next one, or do I chase it? And then, but you're in that weird, and then and then you realize, oh shit, if I had to run, it hit a red light, and I would have caught it. It was like that moment. Never don't run for it. Always go for it. That's that's the lesson. Yeah, it definitely was. Um, I'm going to say, like, kind of what Lars said, like a defining moment for, for me that was like, okay, this is this is serious now. Like, I take this. Not that right. I wasn't taking it seriously before, but, like, I'm going to 
this all this is going to happen i'm still going to show up and like do this this thing that i call my career and my pursuit right yeah. and happily show up not and like begrudgingly up. like oh fuck we're so cursed like it was just like okay we're here like i think we had emailed her saying like we might end up being a little late this is what happened so she was in the loop of it as well mm-hmm. but uh, yeah me too it was one of those things where it's like you you know you can tell how much uh, it's like Tom Todorov always says to us: um, "Love takes time, love makes time," and you can tell what you really care about and what you by what you fight for and what you make time for. And we could have easily been like, "This isn't going to happen." It's totally reasonable. Like the reasonable thing to do would have been: "This is a write-off. We're not going to get any sleep. We're two hours away." That's what would have been reasonable. But we we're like. I feel like artists and actors and comics, they're not really reasonable people. Otherwise, you'd be doing reasonable things <laughs> instead of these uh, ridiculous things. Yeah, fun times. Fun times. It was a lot of fun. Let's make a movie about that sometime.